Hello and welcome to the Year 9 Information Evening. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mrs Flanagan and I'm the Progress Leader of Year 9. First of all, I just want to say a huge welcome back to all the parents and all of the students. It's been a really difficult time, something obviously very different than anything we've ever faced before. But it's really good to have the students back and moving forward now with supporting and academically progressing. Year nine then, a little bit different as we're moving through the year of what to expect. There's lots of GCSE introductory content for a number of the subjects. These start off within the sciences, in MFL and across most curriculum based subjects where students will begin to start looking at things that they will obviously then continue into year 10 and into year 11. Options evening will be later on in the year after Christmas where the option process will be fully explained to the students. They'll spend time on it within school and obviously this will be explained to you on the evening and how best you can support your student based on going forward with what they want to do in the future. It will also include within the subjects a higher level of thinking and also with this goes alongside the option subjects they'll want to take forward. They also need to think about the homework timetable and how demanding this will be. This will be gradually increasing as they go up the school because a lot more obviously content is within the subjects and required. There will be higher expectations from teachers. Okay, this is moving forward as they go into the GCSE subjects. You know, there'll be lots of expectations when it comes to the content that they need to include within, within the writing skills, but also in independent study. There's a huge focus, obviously, on attendance at the moment. Now, we totally appreciate that this can't be helped at such a difficult time, but where and when your student can be in, then please get your child into school. Going forward with the positive behaviour, because they have started off so, so well and adapted to the new changes we've had to put in place, the staying in the classroom for the majority of the day is obviously a really difficult thing and we appreciate that and in general your children have done an amazing job and have seemed to be really working well with us. There's also going to be changes in adolescents and obviously the, how that will affect them as well. We appreciate that you know they're all changing at different levels but ultimately year nine seems to be a key time when there's a lot of changes within the body okay but also within the mind as well and we want to do as much as we can to support them in school and obviously can offer lots of services for that but as well if you need to speak to us about any issues you've got at home then please feel free to do so more moving on to that then what you can do monitor homework through google classroom obviously this was introduced during the lockdown period and students seem to have done an amazing job in being able to adapt really quickly to the new process involved in that. You've been sent information home now with regards to this. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We also want you to encourage and support your child as always. Encourage to get them in on time, okay, for them to be prepared for the day and to let us know if you've got any concerns or worries about them so we can, you know, pick them up in the morning, pick them up through the day if we need to and just generally support and offer services if needed. Please be aware of your child's social media usage and their accounts. There was lots of issues over lockdown with relation to this in various year groups. And obviously, as they were off and they had a lot more time and couldn't see their friends, this was the key tool for them to be in communication. It's carried on a little bit and at the moment, year nine seemed to be all over social media and lots of problems seem to be arising as a result of it. So please, we do what we can within school, we make them aware, we speak to them about it, but ultimately it needs to come from you and you disciplining them if needed and monitoring their process. Also, please help them to formulate a bit of a study time. You know, I appreciate that over the lockdown period, you had to give them a bit of an area to work, a computer, a laptop if possible. And hopefully this can continue because to have that space and that area for them at this sort of age, really is going to help them as they go up into the GCSEs. The extension of homework activities is going to be a key point for them to extend their learning. So for you to support them with that at home would be fantastic. And as always, communicate to me, to any members of the staff, any concerns you have with us with relation to your child and how we can help them if you're worried. 
Okay, so moving on a little bit, as well as helping them obviously academically and with their workload, how you can help your teen as well to develop socially. We always encourage students to take on new challenges and again as they're getting older their interests may vary. Okay, so to keep obviously their mind occupied, to give them a break from the schoolwork, try and encourage them to do lots of new challenges. Always encourage your, your teenager to talk with a trusted adult, whether it be yourself, a sibling, or somebody within school that they feel comfortable with. Obviously, then we can offer support if and where they need it. Talk about ways to manage and handle stress. They're going to feel stressed. They're going to feel anxious and worried about things that are to come. Okay, GCSEs, options are a big part of their next step in their future, and they're going to be feeling a little bit stressed out about it please talk to them. We're dealing with things in school and working with coping mechanisms of how they can, we can support them, but ultimately we need your help with that too. Always provide consistent and loving discipline, always with limits. Okay, we need your help with that. We've got the rules in school. We obviously need you to help and support that at home as well. And at the same time, giving them rewards when they do deserve it. And try always to find time to spend together. We've got a big push at the moment within some of the citizenship lessons where we're talking about having a break from social media. They've been on it so much over the past six months and about spending time together as a family where possible or just on a one-on-one -on -one to, to have a good chat with them, to see how things are going, to see how they're feeling being back at school and if there are any worries or concerns. We've got a few key dates when it comes to the year nine. Obviously, we don't know how things are going to pan out with regards to parents' evenings and how it's going to work, but we've got a few dates for you, and these are available on the website. Options evening in February, where hopefully you'll be invited in and we can have a big talk through the option process and how it's going to work, what subjects the students need to take and what is going to be best for them. Parents' evening a little bit after that, so hopefully you'll have the time to speak with individual subject teachers with regards to those option subjects and what's going to be best for your child. And then exams week in May, which will be a big key time for them to obviously put all of that into practice and work towards those GCSE subjects. Just as a reminder, if you're not aware, there are some school building works going on at the moment. These have actually started now on site. So the front reception area is actually not accessible, as always, through the car park. If you need anything, please just give a call to school and we'll direct you, depending on you know, the time of day is where you could be coming into school if needed. Students know where they're allowed and where they're not allowed and are doing really, really well with this. But please just always try to drop off and pick up your student away from school, OK? Because there's lots of, obviously, added building traffic around the area. With relation to Google Classrooms, you have just had a Google Guardian um, introduction and launch, and you should have got the information about it. This will allow you to access your, your child's homework, see what they're doing, what they should be doing, and in general, what's missing. So please monitor this on a daily basis. Okay, if you're unsure of anything, you can contact the subject teacher or contact me and I can look into it for you. If you're having any issues with that, then please do contact the help desk and they will get back to you with regards to your inquiry. Thank you again, and hopefully I will get to see you all soon. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email me or call school and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Hello there. Just a reminder that I'm Mrs Dolphin. I'm sure you, you remember who I am, but for those of you who have forgotten, I'm the assistant head teacher in charge of student welfare and support. You've got my email there on the screen. Uh, we continue to teach students to be ready, respectful and responsible because we want them to be safe and successful. And through PSHC, through form time, through assemblies, we continue to keep deliver the messages to make sure that they are safe and they are successful. I think at the moment, safe comes right up there on high on the agenda um, for obvious reasons. Um, and we'd really like your support in this because we really want our students to be in school. It's been delightful to have them back in. Um, but I think some of them obviously don't fully understand yet the, the, the necessity to follow the rules. And in particular, I think one thing we really need your help with is outside of school at the moment is we have got the rule of six. And outside students should really be in groups of no more than six. Um, so if you can reinforce those messages at home, it would be really helpful to us. 
Equally, we are all the time encouraging students to be washing their hands, to be using hand sanitizer, to be keeping their distance wherever they can. Within the bubble, we know it's very difficult, but across bubbles, and I think the messages they need to hear us in school, but also at home, to make sure that they get home, just how important it is, so that we're able to keep school open and keep everybody safe. I've just put a little flow chart there, just to remind you of what to do, how important it is if your child's ill, that you do keep them off school, particularly if they're showing symptoms of COVID. So if they've got high temperature, if they've got a persistent cough, uh, if they lose the, the smell or, or taste, um, and you need to keep us informed, it's really important that we know about it and that you try to get a test as soon as possible and equally if there's someone in the household that's ill as well, that you keep the student off school uh, until you've had a, a test done and you know that it's a negative result. Um, just to remind you of the safeguarding team, Mr Price is the safeguarding lead, lead but there's also Mr Mullins, myself and Mr Marshall who are on that team and obviously safety is a huge priority. If there's any issues related to safeguarding, even if you're unsure whether there really are issues, just get in touch and have a conversation with us. Uh, we're very, very happy for you to do that and to support you with that. Another reminder just with Sims Parent, that I've already sent a reminder around by Sims in Touch, but I'd also like you to have a check please that all the details are accurate, um, particularly phone numbers, it's very easy, we try our very best to make sure that it's accurate, but we sometimes it's easy just to miss a digit or have a digit incorrect, so please check that it's all accurate and the medical information is up to date, so if there's any medication that your child takes that that's accurate. I wonder how you're doing in terms of technology and social media. I think when they start school and they're in year seven, it's easier to take control, but I still think it's important that you have an overview and that you know what your child is up to and you know about their activities online. I also appreciate how much difficult, more difficult that is when they have a lot more freedom and independence and it's, it's not quite as easy to us to, to see things that they're doing as it was when they're in year seven. But I'd still stress that it is very important that we, we still stay informed about what's going on, particularly in the world of social media, that we have conversations that are free and frank and that we continue to teach them to be smart internet users and not assume just because they're in year 11 that actually they've, they've developed those skills. We're very aware in school that they still make the same mistakes and the same messages need to be made consistently and constantly really. Please be aware of age ratings. I think you can assume when they get to 15, 16 that the, the age is they're fine to be accessing anything, but actually that's not always the case. And I think especially with the importance of exams looming, it's important that you have great times for the use of technology and that you've had that discussion uh, and keep phones, continue to keep phones downstairs and have the confidence to ask for them to be kept downstairs. More often than not, we find that there are conversations that have occurred overnight, sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning, and parents are unaware that actually their young people are on the telephones or on social media. They need the sleep. I think that's really important now more than ever. Um, and have a monitoring, have an agreement, talk to them and put on paper what you've agreed so that you've got something that you can keep going back to. If they've had some input into that and have some ownership of it, it's easier then to um, keep coming back and reminding them of what they were involved in agreeing. And put yourself in control and don't feel that just because they're older you can't do that. You know, more often than not you're still the person that's paying the bill. If there's any um, behaviour online that's not safe or dangerous or anything illegal that takes place, it's your name on that bill and you're the one that's responsible for it. So have the confidence to address that and I think it, it helps us to keep them safe. And the reasons are, you know, you've probably seen things in the things in press too about the fact that, you know, online child abuse cases are the highest since records began. You know, lots and lots of articles about online grooming and also about county lines and exploitation, criminal exploitation. So the dangers are still out there. And I think it's telling young people about them once is never enough. They need to have constant messages that the dangers are there. 
we, and this is why, because I think the word vulnerable is really important and I think what we're noticing in school is that this has been a time where our, a lot of our young people are more vulnerable than they were. They spent an awful lot of time online and some of it legitimately because they've been doing their studies and they've been not doing online lessons, so quite legitimately they've increased their use of IT. But it also makes them more vulnerable because you know you get fed up, they wander off onto different sites, they spend hours and hours online. And I think also it's the one at a time that's made them vulnerable emotionally and that means that sometimes they're a target for people who are wanting to exploit their vulnerability. Equally, with exams coming up, a lot of them are worried. They're worried about the time that they've missed, that they've missed lessons. And we are sending a very strong message that not to worry, you know, we've got it all in hand and that it's the same for all young people of their age. But they are still quite vulnerable, so I think it's a time to be especially vigilant. Um, and just to look out, really, for any signs that they are isolating themselves from you that they are spending time away online with their door shut and very, very secretive about what's going on. If they talk as if from a script, because often we find if people are exploiting them that they'll give them a script to use. So if something in their communication seems to you different, like it's not really them speaking, just take note of that and be a little bit more aware and have a few more questions to ask them. Perhaps they might be unwilling or unable to ever discuss their views and have a sudden disrespect towards others. Maybe your child, you know, has always been something that's very respectful, but you're starting to notice that there's a disrespect that's seeping in. That they get more angry, more secretive, and often they end up with things that you're not really sure where they're getting the money from to buy. So an increase <laughs> financial capacity. We're not trying to say that these signs necessarily mean that there's anything going on that we need to be worried about, but equally there could be something we need to be worried about. And I think talk about it, talk to us about it, talk to your child about it, but be really vigilant because the dangers haven't gone away. I think equally we've also got to be aware of the dangers when they're playing games. Um, we know how many of them like to be playing games and playing with other people online and how, how very much they want to succeed on those games and get to the next level. They're very competitive and I think we need to be aware of how they're the people that want to exploit that to use them and get them into gambling. I'm just going to bring up a very short video just that explains this and I'll show you where you can go to find out more information if it's an area you don't know very much about. As parents we have all seen absolutely explode, it's become a massive part of our children's lives. And because gambling like behaviour is woven into a lot of gaming, it's something that we have to be really aware of. Not necessarily permanently aware of that, but definitely aware of too. So gambling like behaviour is behaviour, let's say we go to So for example, you may be buying a loot box, which means that you're buying a virtual item within the game for you to want to keep going. It might be that they help you progress to the next level of the game, or it might just be that they make you look cool to be other players in the game, or it might just be that there's something that you really, really want kids to great collectors of stuff. And the problem there is that it's very difficult for them to get out of that way. So what we've done at Pantone is to get out and find the best express that we can find, often the gamers, to explain this whole topic and translate it into really accessible, really easy to understand, and if there were just three things that we would say to a parent to have in mind all the time, you should ask your child about the games that they play, you should check that you're comfortable with what they're doing in those games, and you should always know what they're spending money in on and what they're doing. I think it's very easy the older they get to be really complacent about this and think this is about younger children, but it certainly isn't. And I think those messages that were delivered there are really important. So how can we stay informed? Just, I know I've spoken to you about this, but just as a reminder, and if it's a reminder to, to one or two of you, 
Uh, if you go to our website and you look at the top of the top for parents and then you go down to safe, IT safety, you'll find lots of documents there that we, we will be updating uh, regularly. Equally, you can go to the NSPCC website which has got an awful lot about online safety and they've done this in conjunction with O2. The video there that you were being shown was from Parents Own, and this is one area, one website that I really like. There's a free version and also a paid version if you want to have regular updates. Uh, you can send messages and prompts if there's anything that comes out, any new articles that you read. But I really like this because of the guides. I think the guides are excellent that we have for all different apps, for different websites that you can go on to. And it's not just um, in terms of IT safety, there's lots of information on different areas of parenting or things that might concern you. And really accessible guides that use language that, that is accessible to us. And equally it tells you about different websites, different things that they might be doing, and things you take for granted sometimes. I think sometimes you can take sites or apps at face value, and really they're not quite as innocent as you thought they were when you start delving a little bit more deeply. And this gives you the chance to, to stay up to date, to keep up with the young people. Um, this just gives you an example of all the very many apps that they, they, they write about on there. I'll put this on there for you because I know, I'm pretty certain you'll know what TikTok is, but if you're anything like me, you probably haven't got all the details. I found this guide really useful to find out the ins and outs of it. Much of it is innocent, but I think it, it, it's a good opportunity, especially since part of all of it really is young people filming themselves and putting them online to see what the dangers can be, what are the risks, and how do we manage those risks rather than just say that something's banned. Uh, I think you know how is another website that is very, very useful, um, as well as internetmatters.org. So you've got these on the PowerPoint and you can go, go ahead and have a look at them. I'm just reminding you about CEOP and if anything you see, if there's anything you see that you really are not happy about and you think it's dangerous, you feel like there's bullying online, you can also always contact CEOP and make a referral and you do have trained workers there, trained professionals who can help you with understanding legislation and can also follow up on any, any complaints or issues you might have. If there's anything at all that you really do need to speak to us about, please don't hesitate. If you're concerned or you feel out of your depth, we can signpost you towards further support and information. If anything, this it, it's difficult to navigate your way through the information. You've got to decide which ones are accessible to you. But I think the tendency can be to be complacent, and I think we don't want that. We don't want the risks to be there for our young people. It's about working with them and minimising them. I think support services are going to be really important for young people in year 11 this year. I've already touched a little bit on anxiety there. At the moment, we're finding that they're managing it quite well, but we're also expecting that maybe there'll be more cases reported and more, more requests for help. We're very much pushing, pushing this year the Stratford Grammar Wellbeing Toolkit because we've got some excellent universal resources for everybody that they can access just to keep themselves fit and well. I think it's really important about the physical health this year that they are getting lots of sleep, they're eating well, they're keeping as fit as they can be, but also mentally that they're thinking about the mental health. Um, lots of resources there that we've got, and just a reminder that COOTH is the online counselling service that's available to everybody. We've also got an excellent diary um, that we've been provided with, and it, it's one that students, it's, it's a journal really, that students can fill in themselves online, but it guides them through towards journaling and how to manage their own anxieties, um, and that's something we're going to tell them about and, and make them aware that it's accessible for all of them. Equally, just a reminder that if they need some more GATS-specific support, that we've got a school counsellor who's still going to be coming into school every Friday. There are appointments available, it may be weekly or fortnightly, depending on demand. And the counsellor is from Taught This and Change, it's a very reputable company. 
Equally, we're going to have another 42nd Street worker who will be working um, one day a week on a Tuesday this year. There'll be five appointments available weekly. Uh, the councillor's had a lot of experience in counselling. She's also available to do some CBT counselling. Um, and that could be by referral by yourselves if you're concerned and you'd like us to speak to your child about counselling, you can do. But equally, the young person can make a referral. We're looking to put a, an email address on the website for students so that they can request support without having to approach an adult in school. So that should be arriving soon, so keep looking out for that. And equally the school nurse is coming into school once a week and you can refer your child or we can or the child can refer themselves. And the school nurse will deal with any, a whole range of issues, uh, physical and also mental. Um, concerns and can advise and can also liaise with, with the GP if needed. Just a reminder about Cooth, all young people in school will have had um, some training in the use of Cooth, they'll have assemblies and also we direct them towards the website, some videos on the website which give them information but if they are at home and out of school hours and worried and wanting to speak to somebody and you're worried about them I think if you just keep mentioning, have you tried Cooth? Have you given it a go? Have you been on the website? Because there are some notice boards, there are some forums, but also you can request an online counsellor. Um, demand's quite high, but I, I believe that most people are seen within a couple of hours. And just a reminder that we've, we've done Dot B, that most of them have mindfulness practices that they have been taught. They might be a little bit rusty, they might need reminding of them. But it's always worth a try saying, have you, can you remember when you did dot B in school? Have you given it a try? Have you tried any of the practices? They can be a bit lazy about them and think that because they've tried them once and they haven't worked, they're not really for them. But I think what it takes is practice, um, and just a reminder about it to make it work. And if you have any SEA concerns, please get in touch with us. Um, Naomi Hyde is now the, the SENCO uh, and you've got the email address there for the SEM department. Don't be thinking it's too late if you haven't made any referrals, still keep, keep speaking to us. We will have an online parent forum sometime this term where you can speak to us about any concerns as well. I think it's really, really important that we, we keep in touch in relation to the, the physical and mental well-being of young people in year 11. Um, so keep speaking to form tutors, Mr Crowley, myself, Mr Price, if you're worried about anything. Even if you think it's a small thing, just keep in touch with us and we can work together to make sure that the Year 11s are safe and they will be successful. Thank you.